All right, well, I had a customer bring me an instrument cluster from an 07 GMC Yukon XL. And he says intermittently the display does not work. And he believes he knows what the problem is because he can kind of tap around on it, and get it to come and go. So let me zoom in and show you what he thinks the issue is. So the customer does believe it's this little, I believe it's a FET possibly. It might be just a bipolar transistor, but it is the switching transformer driver. And as you can see, it's been hot. And it looks like that center lead might be broken off the board. I'm not sure, but all he asked me to do is go ahead and resolder it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add some flux to the pins. This is the Amtec flux. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and try to add some solder and see if it's going to take to these pins or not. The bigger the glob, the better the job. And I think I'm going to go ahead and touch up all the pins on the switching transformer at the same time. Okay, now we'll hit it with some magical solution acetone. All right, well that certainly does look much better. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to the customer and rely on the honor system that he lets me know if this did repair the issue or not. And while I'm here, I wanna go ahead and resolder the connections to the filament, the heater and the vacuum fluorescent display, the VFD. The three left pins noted by number one and the three right pins noted by number 43, as well as on the Prindle display right here. The two left pins noted by number one and the two right pins noted by number 20. So let's flip that board over and go ahead and resolder those connections. Those are the high current heaters. You can see the tiny little filaments inside there. That's what creates the heat to act like a vacuum tube. It's a vacuum fluorescent display. And then over here, you can see this one actually has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven filaments or seven heaters in this unit. So let's go ahead and resolder the three on each end of this one and the two on each end of this one. Well, judging by just looking at these connectors, these two on the end right here have rings all the way around them. So that could be the possible issue. Maybe it wasn't that FET or transistor after all. 
and I am using the Lewis Rossman 5000 diameter solder. Excuse me, it is 15 thousandths diameter solder. Maybe it'll focus, maybe it won't. It's turned around. So this is the Kester 0 0.015 inches, 15 thousand solder. And it is a 6337 mix as noted by the numbers down there on the very bottom. Very good solder for a very delicate, minute, intricate work. Okay, quick clean. This thing's out of here. And I just noticed that the heater pins actually go in separate locations. So I want to make sure I do a thorough job for this customer. So this one does have the heater pins up here as well. So we'll go ahead and add some 15,000 solder to that, just to these two pins on each end. And then the three pins here on each end. Okay, now acetone to the rescue. Okay, I think that's gonna be good. Well, I'm no Jeff Cortex. He's like the master of GM instrument clusters, but hopefully this will take care of the customer's issue. Just resoldering that transistor. It might be a FET, might be a bipolar, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and send it back. Is there a piece of fuzz stuck in there? What is that? No, it's just a scratch on the board, okay. Anyhow, I'm gonna go and send it back. Okay, there it is, all back together. The pointers are attached, ready to ship back to my customer. Actually, it's just a local drop-off, so. He'll let me know if it works or not, and we'll go from there. Maybe we'll have to change that FET, maybe not. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye. All right, let's take that again, because I forked up.